Hey, welcome back. I'm Vince Mancuso, and today we're gonna talk about um, we're gonna talk about light. We're gonna talk about light. We're gonna talk about uh, the angle of light. We're gonna talk about how light moves, and we're gonna talk about how you figure out how to apply light onto um, basic forms. And how you figure out the cast shadows that are caused from the absence of light. Okay? So let's just let's just now think about this for a while. Okay, so a little bit, you know, light, okay? Uh, light. What is light? Light is energy. Okay? So it's a it's it's a light source, right? An energy source, right? Okay, the most obvious one is the sun. But this could also be, you know, uh, a light bulb. Uh, it could be a, 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 a street light. Right. Any energy source. Now here's the important thing to, to understand, okay? And the simple the simple idea is based around this that sort of means something to an artist, right? That sort of provides something significant to an artist to take away that they can apply to uh, you know to their work and make beautiful pictures. So let me erase this here. Actually, let's just do this. Just get rid of that cut. All right, gone. So let's first start by uh, uh, understanding how light moves, okay? So if you consider a light source basically ground zero, right? When we're talking about the movement of light, it basically moves, right? It's funny. It's basically, you know, the Y, you know, and and we got the, you know, X, and we got the Z, okay? Um, where have you heard that before, eh? The X, Y, Z axes, right? So now it's kind of like it moves in 360 degrees, right? In every direction, right? Now the thing that's really cool and important about light is that you understand that it travels, right? In straight lines. Light travels in straight lines. I'm a terrible speller, so forgive me if, if, I, if I screw that up, all right? So if we take that idea and we say, okay, so how do, how, how do we utilize that for our terms, right? When we're trying to figure out a lighting system for uh, an, an object or a picture, right? Well, check it out. I'm going to show you. And this is where you start to establish the idea of the angle of light, right? So if you've got a light source, okay, that light source is going to move, right, in 360 degrees, all right? So if I'm making a picture here and I want to establish a ground plane, all right? So I, I basically bring a perpendicular line down to the ground wherever I determine it to be, okay? Now, what, what's important to notice is, you know, if, if I place the ground point there, right, it means now that, you know, I, I'm going to be applying the light, you know, somewhere back into the picture, right, because I'm in the foreground, right? If I do something like this, if I create the light source over here and I bring the, 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 the ground plane is there, right, now my light source is positioned in the back, Okay, so let me, let me show you how that how that kind of works, right? Because my my 
the direction of light is going to come this way, right? As opposed to this one here, the direction of light is going to come that way, right? I, you know, I can basically move this around anywhere I want, okay? I'm the artist. I decide. There's no rule, okay? You've got to just understand this idea and how it works. I establish where the ground is because I'm the one creating the picture, right? So fundamentally here, right, if, if I was to draw a cube between these two station points, right, these two light sources, Now, each will affect the lighting in a different way, okay? This one here, look, is coming from the back. So coming from the back, my, my, my points of intersection, look, are, are here. Look, I, I'm coming through here. Look, I'm coming through that point, right? And I'm hitting the ground, right? Like, you know somewhere right you know now i'm establishing this right so i'm saying i'm hitting the ground right there okay so i come through that point there and i'm hitting the ground you know somewhere around here right okay now that edge is moving this way look the, the back edge here is moving this way So when I'm establishing the cross line of these two points to establish that shadow, that line will have to be parallel to that back edge. And also, because it's in perspective, will have to converge somewhere in space. And is my line converging? Yes, it is. You see? And because it's converging now, I kind of know that I got it in the right perspective, right? Because I'm following my perspective lines into space. Okay. Very important. Um, now I'm going to run another line from my light source through this corner, right? And if I go through here, I hit, right? You know, if I'm, I'm trying to stay parallel to this line, so I hit. The, the ground somewhere around here. You see? And let me see if there's any significance in running through. Well, you know. Yeah, I could, you know, I could actually sort of establish something there. All right, so now, if I trace this through, I can actually establish the cast shadow. And if I draw an inside line there to that ground point, right, I go back. So just that little bit right there that it sort of does that, right? And now I've created uh, a cast shadow. See how cool that is? Created a cast shadow. And then I can just go in, look, very quickly, right? And come across nice and hard. So you notice how I'm edging the outer edges first, right? Just one quick, quick stroke, and then I can fill with security. This is how to optimize speed, okay? Um, this is going to be my core shadow. This is going to be my shadow. Get that line lining up right in there. Cut that hard right in there. Right, now I can fill that in real quick. Right. Very important to understand that, that cut, right? Or that, 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 that draw, right? Um, and now I can put my light. Cut that edge, seal it. Cut that edge, seal it. C cut it, seal it. Okay. 
and I've established where my shadow is. Okay. Now, watch, I'll do the, the, the reverse side. What do we got here? Oh. Okay, let me just go backwards. Now I'm going to go the opposite way. See the light source that's in front, and it will cast the shadow going behind as opposed to coming towards me. This is where you position the light. Okay, you position the light. So you come through, come through this corner, come to the ground, somewhere around there, right? Come through this corner, go through this corner, come to the ground. Right? I'm looking to get in line with that back corner. Come through again, through this corner, hit the ground. I'm looking to make that line parallel. Okay. I'm going to come through again just to see if there's any relevancy there. Maybe not, right? Now, I take this point, the ground point here, and I run through this corner. Look. And I establish that point there. I run through this back corner, and I establish that point there. And where those lines intersect. Uh, I come back through here. I got a, there's a, an inner line in there, right? If, if I run through there and I come back to here, I establish something there. Here. And I'm just going to see if there's any point in coming through here. Right. Let's see, there's coming through that corner and then I'm going to come through here, right to there. So that goes through, right, so this and this does become important because I have to connect it to there, right, so I just get a little knobby bit come off of that line there and then I'm charting that line that coordinate this coordinate and now I've got my now I've got my cast shadow And the light is going in the opposite direction. Fill that in. Now, get my dark. You always make the core shadow the furthest away from the light. The shadow is the next. Because right? given the angle of the light, it, the likelihood of the light hitting the top first is more likely. And then we pop in the light. So what's significant to understand here is this, right? The light source emanates light in 360 degrees in every direction. That light then travels and hits significant points on the object 
right? That it has to then go through. Then that follows through to the ground plane, right? Wherever you decide that is, you're the artist, right? And you follow through and then this being your ground point, right? Your shadow point on the ground, okay? You run that through the bottom plane, right? Also in behind into the four corners because there's an angle there that you have to get right like you got to come through this spot and then you got to come through that spot and then you got to come through that spot and then you got to come through this spot you see and you intersect and you can create all your connections and then you can project the shadow onto the ground which basically is a grid like this okay I am creating. I am putting that there on the ground plane. Okay. Now this is this is what you you got to understand because when you look at stuff like this, you think, oh my god, you know, like what are the rules? Am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? You know, it's the idea here. You know, there's a ground plane, and that ground plane is where the cube is sitting. How do I know that? Well, I'm the artist. I created it. Okay, I wanted it to look like that. I drew it like that. Okay? So I determine where the ground plane is. I determine the angle of the light. Right? If I turn, turn around and, and want to do this, look. Go back to here. And now I want to drop the light. Look at how it changes. I want to drop the light source to here. Okay. So now that's going to change my angle, right? So when this line comes through here, it's a long shadow, right? See? No, and I can make it go right off the page if I want, if I want to justify it that way, or I can bring it back in here. Okay, if I want a little shorter. Now, I'm the one creating this picture. Do I want the shadow to be longer? Do I want it to be shorter? You know, what's my advantage here? Okay, see, I'm cutting through that point there. You know, so now when this cuts through here, you know, it's coming and hitting there. You know, when it cuts through this point there, it's hitting right about there. Okay, so I've got this kind of angle happening when it cuts through this back point it comes through to there so look at how that lines up right and then when it cuts through this point let's 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 get established now we'll point through this corner right it comes right about there so now I've got this and then I've got this and now I've changed the whole character of the shadow. I've created an hour and more extended shadow because I dropped the light source. Okay. This is something you gotta play with, right? Start figuring some of these things out and and understanding how they work so you could take full advantage of their, their pictorial effect right and now I can proceed look the one behind gets the, the core shadow fill it in then the one to the side gets the shadow And then the light one on top. So look at this now. Now look at look at how I tighten up this this cube. Look at how I I sort of give it a little bit more more bling, right? So I 
I'm going to do a select. I'm going to come across and I'm going to go like this. Okay, so now I can go in and select. Let's see one of these. Willow. And I'm going to get slightly darker gray. Bring this down. dusting gradation right across there a little dusting right across the bottom reinforce this back edge just kind of hit that edge just a little touch right release that now I've given it some shade and some mid dimension I'm going to just cut underneath here and clean up that shadow of a softness right. now I'm just going to glance a little bit here on the edges for the inner shadow see how that that just gives it a little little extra bling right and now I gotta take that tone and I'm just gonna come and shimmer some light to the edges of this cube A little eraser here and give it a little cleanup. Get some of these lines happening. And look at what I'm trying to do with the lines. I'm trying to get the lines converging. Okay. And then I'll just go back and get a nice. Come on, let's get, let's get this compressed 6B. I'm going to go to pure. Is that pure white? No, it's not. Look at that. I want some pure white in there. Yeah. And I'm going to just bring this down and give a little highlight rimming. Highlight rimming where the light source is coming. Concentrate it on that edge. And also, uh, I'm going to beef up the blacks now around the edge. Very important, right? Give this thing a nice graphic, crisp feel. And one come right down that inner. Just give that. It gives that a little bit more oomph. Okay, and you got a cube with the cast shadow, right? So now I'm going to show you something cool. I'm going to show you how to create a cast shadow on an object that's floating over top of another one. It's not necessarily uh, on a ground plane, okay? This is very important. Uh, because, um, let me just, let me just turn that off and go back here. So check this out. So if we establish a light source, let's get here. Uh, I'm going to go back to my pencil chalk, right? If we establish a light source and, but there's no ground. Okay. So this isn't, this isn't dropping and sort of hitting a, a, a ground point, it's actually continuing on off the page to infinity, right? Because now we're floating in space, right? So let me let me rise this, raise this light a little higher. Okay, so here's a light source. So now you know you're getting your light is moving like this, right, in 360 degrees, right? Right? And yeah, you happen to draw a cube, right? That's kind of floating, 
right here. Uh, let's just get this the perspective right here. I think it's doing something like this. Okay. And then right underneath it, there's another one. And it's doing something like this, let's say. It's kind of coming on an angle like that. It's a bigger cube. Right? Well, now it's like you don't have a floor, right? You don't have a floor. So you have to project down uh, onto a surface and anticipate, right? You know, uh, the fact that, you know, this floor is kind of positioned like this in space. And then beyond that point, it's sloping. And beyond that point, there is no floor, right? So if I take and start running my light lines, look, if I, if I run this through this point here and continue on, where will it hit, okay? You know? Maybe that's a coordinate right there, okay? Now, you're the artist, so you're designing this. You're going to use your logic now, right? So I'm bringing this this point somewhere somewhere and around there okay what I'm looking is to maintain a certain parallelness you know with the line and the angle here I'm gonna run this through there and bring it down to this surface right now look at you know I'm, I'm looking at the angle of that edge so that's going out to I got to come back in here because this is kind of on a on a, a sort of a parallel it's a parallel line right so I'm trying to find a, a reasonable coordinate. Then I've got to get this back corner right through here. Right? There's all this right back in here. So now I've got to run a, one through that corner. And I gotta come down to here. Right. So I'm somewhere in there. Right? And then I bring one through here to come down somewhere that edge right there right so I could be looking at you know like a shape like that right that's casting itself yeah. onto that surface. And that looks, you know, about right. So now if I fill that in, right, let's, let's see here. I'm going to take uh, my light tone. Look, this plane is the obvious plane. It's, it's, it's directly in front of the light. And it has to hit right through here. That's going to get the majority of the light coming from that light source. Now you have an interesting choice here, you know. Which one do you think is the one that should get the deeper shadow? I mean, you, you could go either way and you're gonna find situations where you will have that alternative option, okay? Don't get confused. You're the artist. You decide what it is you want. So I'm going to put the, the dark tone here on the top plane. And then the inner shadow, inner core shadow, which is even darker, uh, I'll take it down into here, right? Which seems to be, in my mind, you know, the way I want it is to sort of oppose and get the, the, the highest contrast here. Okay, so everything on that plane, right? Because you're gonna find when cubes are in different positions. You'll, you'll have, logically, you can make the argument for one getting a dark, one side getting a darker tone than the other, okay? Uh, it doesn't mean you can't do it uh, 
differently and the picture won't look good. It will, will look good, but it'll just be a different results graphically, you know, by changing and positioning, repositioning the shapes and the tones, it'll just give you a different results. Okay. So now I've put, you see, a cast shadow on this. Uh, the top surface would get this tone now. Look, we edge it. Right, speed is God, think efficiency, work efficient, right? Work efficient. So I've got now my light tone. Now I don't see this other side, so I'm going to choose to get the more contrasty tonal value here on this side. I think it'll make things look graphically better. And now I've drawn two cubes, right, with a cast shadow uh, from the light source, from the position of the light source, you see? And, and of course, cubes now in different points in space, right, will be affected accordingly. Uh, let's see. You know, there's one in that position. So for example, if, if there was a cube here, right, doing this, okay, now the light source is gonna run through these points, right? Look. Yeah. All right, so there's, Gonna come through here. I'm gonna come through that point there. I'm gonna through that back point there. Right? We know I'm, I'm like you gotta run the light right through those corners, right? Go, uh huh. You know, I'm gonna go. Yeah, so now you you're getting this kind of situation, right? my cast shadow would be here on that surface. All right, and then I'm gonna get that mid, that, that shadow in there. Okay, and this is how you've got to start to think about when you start applying your light to your 150 cubes in space, right? You set up one light source in one position, and then everything gets lit based on that, right? Here again, I'm staying consistent. All of the planes that are closest to the light are going to get the light value. And then once again, I'm going to go for the core shadow because the the uh, dark tone is being negated, right? I'm keeping everything that's facing me into the core shadow value. This is a choice. And now I'm sort of consistently starting to create cubes in space that are getting cast shadows, right? And then if I want to refine, I go back, right? And I start playing with the edges. Let's see what we got here. I don't like the effect that that's giving me. I'm going to go here to my limestone. Come across it a little bit more. And just to sort of give, in, give things a bit of a softness. You notice that a lot of drawing is playing hard edges against soft edges. This is part of what gives things the, the feeling of reality because that's what we have when objects get lit. You know, you get soft edges and hard edges sort of contrasting. So when I soften those shadows up, it even makes things look a little bit more real, right? These things are, it's such important ideas, right? You know, so I'll clean that up. 
Okay. So, and that's how you establish the shadows on floating objects that aren't necessarily perpendicular or 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 flat to the ground plane at a 90 degree angle. They're they're floating in space in every which way. Okay. And you know, you're the artist, you know, you decide how far you want to extend these things out. But if you follow the logic and the rationale that the light source is a um at ground zero, light travels in straight lines and moves in 360 degrees. Right? So they go through the corners or the extreme points of a form and you plot points now to the object in behind that it encounters. Right? Then you can start to establish exactly where the cast shadow is. And then you adapt it to look right. Okay? You know, you're not concerned here in some sort of mathematical medical equation. You're not trying to program this into a computer. You are trying to visually use your, your, your mind's computer to say, yes, that's looking right. That's the way I want it to look. Or you know what? It, it makes sense over here. But if I exaggerate that shadow a little bit or diminish it, my picture even looks more dynamic, more interesting. That's where no computer can actually figure out because a human being can make those kind of choices in the moment to what their eyes suggest works better. Okay, that's your responsibility as an artist. And for you to take advantage. This is just a, a concept, a, 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 a mathematical concept of the, you know, the angle of light. Okay, you know, this is all of these rays are referred to as, you know, the, the angles of light right, that are emanating from the light source, right, you know, the angle of light, all right, that's one, you know, every ray, you know, is coming, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, at a certain angle, and if you maintain a consistency with that, radiating out in 360 degrees, just like a compass, then you can start to plot coordinates in space that will establish your cast shadow. Okay. Now look, people are very uptight about shadows. They don't want to take risks. They're afraid. Okay. They get all confused. They don't know where to stop. Look, you got to try. You got to practice. You got to fuck it up. It doesn't look so good. And then try it again and you will improve and you will make adjustments. I will tell you that if you don't try, you will always be in exactly the same place and you will not advance. The effectiveness of your drawings. It is an unmistakable effect that if you actually have, okay, cast shadows, uh, your work actually looks more luminous and more real. If you have, if you don't have cast shadows, things look more graphic. Okay, so there's a trade-off. You might want it to look more graphic, and you choose not to use cast shadows. You want it to look more realistic and you use cast shadows, okay? As a designer, art director, you have to make those choices. But for our purposes, cast shadows are required when you're toning so that you can master them, all right? So I want to see images that utilize cast shadows. So I'm going to end it there. I'm giving you now uh, the methodology used to establish cast shadows uh, on a cube when it's on a ground plane and when the cubes are floating. You're going to have to use this technique when you apply uh, your tonal values to project two. Uh, and then we will carry the, this process all the way through. So every drawing you make has to have a light tone a shadow, a core shadow, a cast shadow. And then if there is time, you go back and refine by putting highlights and deepening core shadows and cast shadows, you know, on the edges of the object and then shimmering on the surface. And you, you can optimize the um, slickness or the, the sort of the, 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 visual, uh, the, the, the visual realism effect you know, by doing so, but not at the expense of meeting your deadlines and getting your job done. So the first thing you do is you apply your light tone all over, you apply your shadow tone all over, you apply your core shadow, just like I did very systematically, cutting the edges of the planes and trying to work efficiently. Because when you work efficiently, you get things done faster and smarter um, and m you establish more continuity and consistent in your piece.
in your drawing. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, we're going to time out now, and uh, we'll, we'll talk drawing and painting next time with Vince Mancuso. Ciao for now, guys.